Okay, welcome. We're going to read the story, The Invisible Boy, and ask some questions to ourselves to really understand the story. We're going to listen with care, and we're going to speak one at a time. Since we're doing this on our own, we'll answer the questions, and we'll be able to speak whenever we want to. Our essential question, what is school and why is school important? Our learning target, I can respond to questions using details from the text to support my answers. Our success criteria, I can describe what happens in the text to make Brian feel invisible at the beginning of The Invisible Boy. So we're gonna read the first part of The Invisible Boy and we're gonna ask ourselves, why did Brian feel invisible in the story? Brian felt invisible because, this is a question we'll um, think about. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Look at the picture. How can you tell which student is Brian? Yeah, there's one student that looks a little bit different. It looks like um, he's not even colored in. He looks like he's very quiet compared to the other students. What do you see happening in the classroom that might make it hard for Mrs. Carlotti to notice Brian? I want you to answer this question to yourself right now. Mm, it looks like she's focusing on something else. Nathan has problems with what Mrs. Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. What does the author mean when she says that Brian doesn't take up a lot of space? Just think about that problem. What details can you see in the illustration? I want you to look at the picture right now. Can you make the same expression as Brian on page four? When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first. Then the best friends of the best players. Then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. They are choosing teams to play kickball. Would you pick the, your best friend to be on your team? What part of the school day is this? You can use details from the story to help you answer that question. Is it lunch, recess, science? What do you see in the picture of Brian that shows he is hoping? Let's look at that picture of Brian. If we do it like the last page where we acted out, his face looks hopeful, his eyebrows are up, he's smiling. What is another word for hoping? Can you make your face and body look like you are hoping for something? JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. What does glance mean? Hmm, if we're not sure, we can look back at the text. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. It might mean to look. We use details from the text to help us find out what that vocabulary word meant. How does Brian feel at recess? What detail in the text or picture helps you know how Brian feels? What in the story makes him feel sad? Let's think about those questions for a little bit. Let's role play. We're gonna read a certain part of the text again and we'll decide what character we should be. We're gonna think about what that character is saying and doing and act it out. So we're gonna act out this page right here where Brian did not get chosen for a kickball team. What happened in this part of the text to make Brian feel invisible? So we're gonna practice what it might look like to role play, and this is gonna be your seesaw assignment for the day. So think about how you might act what's happening on this page out. 
Just pick one character. We'll relook at this when we to, uh, when we do our seesaw assignment. Readers do these things. We look closely at the pictures and reread important parts of the text. So we've already read this story, but we can all still learn so much more by reading it again. So close readers do these things. So now we're going to reflect on our learning. Our learning targets where I can respond to questions using details from the text to support my answers. That's the most important part is you're using the book. You're not just making things up in your head. You're looking at the book and what the book says. And I can stay on topic when we're um, answering questions. So you can give yourself a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And you know that this will be just for you because I can't see you right now. But you'll know if you um, still need practice with this or if um, you're doing really great. 